Hello, Sago, Scano Six Nations, and happy Friday to everyone listening. Today marks the beginning of several long weekends ahead. I'm Lori Davis-Hill, Director of Six Nations Health Services, and this is your COVID-19 podcast podcast update for May 15th. I need to stress to everyone listening that we must remain on guard as a community. We are still making our way through this COVID-19 pandemic journey. Despite the province reopening various various businesses to the public, we need to continue our heightened sense of health and safety guidelines, such as maintaining physical distancing as much as possible, avoiding gatherings of people from different households, wearing a face covering if you are in a public setting, continue proper hand hygiene, self-isolate and report any new or worse symptoms. We have done such a good job so far and we need to consider our checkpoint safeguards. The checkpoints only work if we all do our part and continue to stay safe at home. Although some of us may be exploring the ideas of traveling this long weekend, keep in mind that the risks still remain. You are exposing yourself, your loved ones, and your community. Would you bet your life on COVID-19? Would you bet the life of your loved one? And now I'd like to turn our ears towards our wellness tips. Natasha Slezak is the Crisis Response Coordinator for Six Nations of the Grand River. Natasha, thank you for returning again this week for today's edition of the COVID-19 Podcast Update. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be on the podcast. I wanted to start first by sharing with all of you and acknowledging that this has been such a difficult time for all of us, and there may be some fears and anxieties related to the phased reopening and what our new normal may look like moving forward. As we are slowly adapting, anxieties, stressors, and fears of the unknown may be setting in. It is very common and normal to experience stress reactions. These reactions can appear immediately, weeks or months later, depending on the personal impact, we all experience and react differently to situations. Some of us may be having difficulty and occasionally individuals may need professional, professional, traditional or spiritual supports when they're unable to manage by themselves. This does not imply mental instability or weakness. It simply indicates the stressor of feelings that somebody is experiencing is too difficult for one to manage themselves. Some of these reactions may present as headaches, tiredness, poor tension, poor concentration, difficulty remembering things, hypervigilance, increased use of drugs or alcohol, fear, panic, guilt, agitation, and anger, just to list a few. It is very natural to feel worried about COVID-19, especially with all the unknowns. As restrictions are being eased, we need to ensure that we are following all the physical distancing guidelines and restrictions that have been put in place for our safety and well-being. We all have a role to play in fighting the spread of COVID-19 and protecting our most vulnerable. I wanted to take the time to stress the importance of communicating and reaching out to others. If now more than ever, we need to stay connected. I came across this document put out by the First Nations Health Authority titled Staying Connected During the Pandemic. Please see the link for further information. In this document, there are some ideas on staying connected that I wanted to share with you. First one is support those around you. Call an elder or a young person every day to check in. Send an email, a text to a loved one. Make a video call so people know you are thinking of them. Get out on the land and reconnect with nature. Traditional look or harvest traditional medicines and foods. Take a walk or get out on the water. Seek wisdom from knowledge keepers and traditional healers. Even though there is no cure at this time for COVID-19, many of our medicines strengthen and cleanse our bodies and minds. Prioritize your wellness and focus on where your energies are needed. Take time and practice mindfulness. Embrace this time to spend with your children. Children are absorbing everything that is happening daily. Teach your children about our history, culture, and language. Reach out to some, to some of our programming that is still happening. Thank you for your time and allowing me to be on the podcast today. If you or someone you know may be struggling or need or in need of help or support, please reach out to one of our services. We have Mental Health and Addiction Services. Their telephone number is 519-445-2143. We have our Six Nations Child and Family Social Services. Their telephone number is 519-445-2071. We have Gunukwasha Family Support Services. 519-445-4324. And we also have our Six Nations Mobile Crisis Line. That their telephone number is 519-445-2204 or toll free at 
04. Thank you again, and everybody have a safe weekend. Okay, now we have a look at today's numbers um, from our surrounding communities. Right now at Six Nations, we remain at 11 positive cases. 10 of those cases have resolved with one death. We currently have no active cases. To date, we have completed 522 tests and have received 443 negative results. We have 39 people in isolation as by Oshigan Public Health. Please continue to identify symptoms and get testing to help us monitor the impact of the virus on Six Nations. Chiefs of Ontario reports that as of May 11th, there have been 4,005 4, First Nations people tested with 81 positive cases in Ontario. And the statistics in surrounding communities, New Credit remains at one positive case. Haldeman Norfolk Public Health has 204 positive cases, 78 resolved and 30 deaths. Brant Public Health Unit is reporting holding at 102 positive cases, 90 resolved and 3 deaths. Hamilton Public Health Unit reports 512 cases, 372 resolved and 25 deaths. Toronto Public Health reports 8,097 positive cases, 5,851 are resolved and 648 deaths. The province is set to announce the opening of more low-risk businesses and one opening this weekend is golf courses along with more retail. If you find yourself venturing out onto the golf course as the long weekend approaches, please remember to stay the physical distance six feet apart from your fellow golfers. Do not share golf clubs or other equipment. Remember to sanitize your golf clubs and your hands afterwards, and let's stay COVID clear. If you are experiencing any one of the COVID-19 symptoms or any other new or unusual symptom, it is important that you call the Six Nations COVID-19 Assessment Centre at 226-446-9909 or toll-free at 1-855-977-7737. The COVID-19 hotline is open seven days a week to take your calls. We're closing in on this long weekend, um, but we're back tomorrow. Um, before I leave, I want to let you know that Six Nations COVID Relief Fund has been announced, which will be used to purchase much-needed personal protective equipment, medical supplies, including equipment to maintain essential pandemic operations, as well as food and necessities for many community members who are facing financial challenges. The fund is be admi being administered by the Royal Bank of Canada, and contributions can be made through Electronic Funds Transfer, or EFT, and the electronic banking email is covidrelief at sixnations.ca. Public Works has put out a call for homemade masks, and any and all donations are greatly appreciated. For more information, please call 519-445-4242. And again, we, if you would like to connect with the Six Nations Mobile Crisis Service, you can do, by, you can do so by phone at 866-445-2205 sorry, 2204 or 519-445-2204. That's available 24-7. There is also a text number, 226-777-9480 or a live chat on the Six Nations COVID19.ca website. And I want to say we've done an excellent job so far at keeping our community safe. I want to commend all of the community members and our visitors who we've asked to stay home and stay safe during this pandemic. We will get through COVID-19 COVID by maintaining our good mind. Once again, happy Nursing Week and happy Policing Week. Now to all of our frontline workers. Please stay home for them. Please stay home for all of us. Stay well and stay safe. Now on.